Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Corner. It's that time of day again. It's time for Andy's HVAC Tech Tips of the Day. Because everybody knows that Andy's Corner is that happy little place in the world where we all sit back and talk about all things HVAC. Uh, and today's HVAC topic, I'd like to talk about heat pumps a little bit. Um, I've had a couple people, uh, some of the comments from subscribers, uh, ask about heat pumps and say a different, couple different things. Um, you know, you hear a lot of information about air source heat pumps, and I'm not talking geothermal, I'm talking strictly air source heat pumps here, where you've got a unit that sits outside, and then you've got a backup unit, a gas furnace, or an electric air handler inside. Uh, you know, geothermal, if you're looking for geothermal heat pumps, I do have another video out there. Uh, but uh, air source heat pumps, you know, in my opinion, there's a lot of uh, I guess old wives tales and different things to where they get a bad rap. You know, people say, well, they can't heat in my area or they're not efficient in my area. Or, you know, I live too far North. I can't have a heat pump or, um, you know, they're not as efficient as they're supposed to be, or, you know, all these different things. And, you know, there are certain circumstances where a heat pump, um, everything has to be looked at correctly for a heat pump. But for the most part, a lot of these old wives tales are wrong. Um, you know, a lot of us out there, you know, any of you guys that are actually in the HVAC field um, and work in, with heat pumps at all, especially like uh, mini splits, you know, we do lots of mini splits these days. Really, that's most of them are they're just a heat pump. They're just smaller. They do have an inverter compressor and a couple different things. But, you know, when you do actually the, the math on how many BTUs that they can generate, they can still generate heat. Uh, just like a regular air source heat pump, even though it gets colder outside, they can still generate heat. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that they can't. Uh, the amount of heat that it does generate does become less once it gets cooler out. Um, but that's no reason to say, oh, well, they're junk and you just can't use them. Because like in our area where, where I live, you know, our winters, we do have really cold temperatures sometimes. Um, you know, we do have on occasion those rare days that get below zero. We do have some, you know, where the temperatures are in the teens. And then we have a lot of days that are in the 30s. Um, so, you know, we don't have cold days every day where it's just bitter cold all the time. Heat pumps work great in our area. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and it also depends on what type of backup source you have because all heat pumps do need a backup source. Um, just because they need a backup source doesn't mean that they can't do it. It means that we want to keep your house comfortable. We want to make sure you are as comfortable as possible and still as efficient as possible. So you can have an electric uh, air handler for a backup or you can have a gas furnace uh, for a backup. Me personally, I'm a big fan of the gas furnaces. Uh, we do have a lot of gas furnaces in our areas. I know some places you don't and uh, you, you, know, you use other styles and things like that. That's fine, uh, whatever it is. But you know, I am a big believer in a gas furnace for a backup. Um, because usually at that point, once you get down to 30 degrees or so or below, uh, some people run them anywhere from 20 to 35 degrees. But, you know, a lot of times there's an outdoor thermostat on there that'll shut that down and let that 96 percent efficient gas furnace run. Because at that point, with temperatures that low, we can heat the house faster and become a little bit more efficient with that gas furnace. Uh, but the heat pumps are still able to produce heat down, you know, at lower temperatures. Don't again, don't let anybody tell you that they can't or that they just don't work. Work. Um, another one of the old wives tales out there where was uh, they freeze up all the time and they have nothing but problems with leaking and all this kind of stuff. You know, years ago, at least in, in my area where I'm at, you know, it really a lot of it started back in the 70s. Uh, you know, there were some issues with heat pumps where they had a hard time getting them to defrost uh, on time or at the right time and different things like that. And they did have some units that did leak free on. That doesn't mean every heat pump system is going to freeze up. It doesn't mean every heat pump system is going to have a leak in it. You know, don't believe any of those old wives tales. Uh, it's overrated. You know, heat pumps really are as efficient as they say they are. Um, they have done very well over the years figuring out how to defrost them because the coils on the outside unit in the wintertime, they will develop frost. They will uh, start frosting up once it gets to certain temperatures outside. You know, that coil's cold. Uh, there's moisture in the air, especially where I'm at. Uh, you know, we have 
Uh, there is a little bit of humidity with our cold weather. You know, we do see some rainy winters. We do see a little bit of snowy winters, you know, and we will get frost on there. Um, but there's a defrost timer on there that knows when to set it into defrost, checks a little sensor on there, says, okay, it's too cold, set it into defrost. So it takes off and goes. Uh, it defrosts itself. Um, the house stays warm because the inside unit kicks on, the backup unit kicks in and keeps it warm while it's defrosting, which usually doesn't take but a few minutes anyways. Um, and then, you know, it goes back and does its thing. Uh, with most equipment these days, you know, the leak problem has been stopped uh, as far as leaky coils, leaky, you know, components in there, things like that. Don't worry about that. Uh, that, that is an old wives tale. Um, so, you know, that's, that's not what it's all about anymore. Uh, we don't have that issue. We have aluminum coils. Um, it, the internal parts of those coils are aluminum now. We don't have much issue with formatory corrosion, all that kind of stuff. So uh, everything seems to do pretty well. Um, so you know, they are fairly problem free. Um, and as far as efficiency, the efficiency is there because everybody says, oh, well, they're just not efficient in my area. That's a bunch of crap. It really is. I'm sorry to say it that way, but that's a bunch of crap. Um, you know, I always tell everybody the simplest way. And if you watch some of the other videos, I, I've said it before, but, you know, like a gas furnace, let's say you have a 95% efficient gas furnace. You feed it a dollar, it gives you 95 cents worth of heat back because uh, you have a nickels worth of heat for every dollar that goes up the flue pipe. You feed a heat pump a dollar, it gives you three dollars worth of heat back. You know, you're, you're gaining heat with that heat pump. They are efficient. They really do what they're supposed to do. Um, a lot of people really like the temperatures from a heat pump because uh, it is cooler. Uh, don't listen to that old wives tale either uh, about, oh, well, it blows, out co it blows out cold heat all the time. I don't even know what cold heat is. I don't think that, that's like two opposite things. So that's, that's not a thing. Everybody needs to quit saying it puts out cold heat. I don't know what that is. The temperatures coming out with the heat pump system, they are a little bit cooler than what say like a, a gas furnace is or something like that. Um, you know, we may be doing 130 degree temperature with a 95% efficient gas furnace and with a heat pump, uh, depending on the day, what the temperature is outside, we may be doing 90 to 100. Uh, but even that being a little bit lower, it is still able to heat the house. Uh, it shouldn't have any problems with that. And if it does run just a little bit longer than what your gas furnace would, you feed it a dollar, it gives you $3 worth of heat back. You run that furnace, you feed it a dollar, it gives you 95 cents worth of heat back. So with that efficiency gain, you're still above the curve there. You know, you're still benefiting from that efficiency. So, you know, heat pumps really do work. I hate always hearing all these bad things about them, um, that they just don't do their thing. Now, there are probably some places where some of these things are true. I'm, I'm not going to try to fight that at all. There are some places, um, if you are in extreme Northern areas, you know, like, um, like, you know, consider the States, you know, if, if you're in Alaska, they probably don't do many heat pumps in Alaska. I've never done heating air up there. Uh, you get into Canada, uh, even some of the, the Northern areas of the United States, um, and up that way, I I've never done heating air there. So somebody can tell me I'm wrong, but I, they probably don't do many heat pumps. I don't know. It is really cold there. They need a lot more heat. They have a lot more heat degree days than uh, throughout a winter than what we do where I'm at now. Um, so, you know, maybe that's not the best place, but, you know, um, definitely down south, the Midwest uh, and fairly a good, fairly far distance up north in the United States. Heat pumps do just fine. You know, there's the different temperature region zones that you can look up uh, and see where they do the best and everything. But like down south, man, that's an excellent option because they are awesome air conditioners. And in areas that you don't need a whole lot of heat anyways, man, that is the efficient way to go. Then you don't have to worry about uh, gas backup or anything like that. Um, I would always put some sort of backup in there, you know, electric strips or whatever. That way you've got something when it goes into defrost or if something were to go wrong. Um, that's the other uh, benefit I see with a heat pump is you have two sources of heat. You know, you've got your inside unit, be it a gas furnace or an air handler with electric heat package in it. And then um, you can, you've got your unit outside. So you really, you've got two sources of heat. So, you know, I'm always one of those, which I, I work on this stuff all day, every day. So this, I think about worst case scenario and what if something breaks down, you know, if something were to break down, you've got two sources of heat. So you should still be able to have something. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, you know, added bonus, whatever. Everybody likes to stay warm. Um, you know, so just, they're not, the, the bad rap that they get is not accurate in a lot of ways. Uh, heat pumps really do the job and the price comparison, uh, price difference to go from just a furnace and air conditioner for to a furnace and a heat pump is usually not that much of a jump. 
Um, and some of these new heat pumps they have out there, uh, awesome efficiencies, uh, noise level is way down. You know, they've blanketed the compressor, uh, the way everything's designed, they are super quiet units, super efficient, um, and the longevity is there too. So, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with the heat pump whatsoever. Uh, if you are heating air guys out there watching this video, uh, don't knock the heat pumps because they're really not that bad. Uh, one of the biggest things uh, heating air guys knock them is because they don't want to work on them in the winter time. I get it. It's cold outside. It does suck working on heat pumps when it's cold outside. I have shoveled snow to have to work on them before. That sucks. But unfortunately, that's just part of the job. If you don't like that, I'm sorry. Go work at McDonald's. I don't know. They're paying pretty good these days from what I hear. Um, so uh, if you know somebody tries to tell you that heat pumps aren't worth anything, tell Chuck and the truck to get on down the road because uh, most contractors out there that do base off of efficiencies and higher efficiency equipment, things like that, um, you know, usually they're going to be talking about the heat pumps. And if you really like the idea of heat pumps, you can move to geothermal heat pumps, which that is an excellent option. Uh, again, check that uh, geothermal video out that I've got out there. Um, I think there may be a couple of them. I'm, I'm a big believer in geothermal. They really do what they're supposed to. But either way, with regular air source heat pumps, they're a good good uh, option for anybody's home. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them in the box below. I love hearing from everybody. And please, please, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button and go ahead and hit the little bell icon while you're there. Uh, that way you get notifications every time a new video comes out. Uh, thank you and God bless.